Well, now comment. And tonight's personal view is that of Brian Montague, a housing welfare officer from Belfast. In the coming week, the government, on behalf of the Treasury, will attempt to convince us that if we were to be modest in our pay demands, it would not affect our living standards. This is based on the assumption that the government will be able to control such things as inflation, which, when rising, has an obvious downward effect on our spending power. To what extent can we accept this guarantee? Throw your mind back to the last election, and all the general elections you can remember before that. All the main political parties told us they had the solution to our problems, the problem of poverty, unemployment, bad housing, and so on. But our experience shows us that the old problems still remain. Is it then the case that these political parties are deliberately misleading us when they make their electoral promises? Or is it, as I would contend, that they are incapable of fulfilling them because of the limitations of the world market system? Take the field that I work in, housing. A recent inquiry headed by no less a person than the Duke of Edinburgh reveals that the housing position in this country is actually worse than it was a hundred years ago. Yet there is an abundance of materials with which to construct houses and the workers who could build them are suffering the misery of unemployment. Thousands of old people will have died of hypothermia this winter because they cannot afford to pay for fuel, whilst the coal board is struggling to implement the dictates of the market and cut back on fuel production. We should try putting these contradictions to an intelligent five-year-old who had not been indoctrinated in the bookmaker's economics of our present global system. He or she would probably suggest that if people can produce the things they need, they should do so freely and avail themselves of their produce as and when required. The five-year-old child would not be aware that the legislators of all political parties have sanctioned on our behalf a situation where we are denied access to wealth-producing resources of the earth. Instead, these resources, including our own work, are under the control of a minority class in society. This minority can legitimately dictate that resources be used above all for the making of profits and not for the provision of needs. Surely that is what the capitalist system is about, both in the West and the state-controlled varieties in the Eastern Bloc, and that is why it is incapable of solving our problems. My logic would demand that we use our democratic power to abolish the laws that vest the minority with ownership and the control of our means of living, that we create a world in which the human community owns the productive machinery, by which I mean land, factories, so that production can be for use and not for profit. This genuine alternative really is the only way in which we can solve the obscene contradictions which abound today.